Greetings special heads, welcome back to Automation and today I'm going to be reviewing another car, it's been a while since I've done one uh, it is the Canyonero built by James Brown and there is a couple of different uh, couple of different options here F first is the base which is just uh, supposed to be cheap so let's let's look into it um, yeah, I know I can't change anything here, but I want to know what it's made of nonetheless. So, a monocoque that's made from corrosion-resistant steel, which is pretty much um, pretty much half price between being, you know, very prestigious and uh, also being relatively cheap. Also, it's good for, you know, um, for the fact that it's corrosion-resistant. And the engine is placed longitudinally. We got McPherson's up front and the and coil springs on the rear end. And the panels are also corrosion resistant steel. The looks remind me of Cadillac's Cadillac Escalade or Lincoln Navigator or something like that. It, it looks pretty American, I, I, I have to say. Lots of chrome. Big front grill, then another grill down here. The fog lights are separated uh, in the angle, and then, then the the indicators are you know, outside here. It, maybe a little bit of a dated look with these indicators here. Usually, you know, cars of these days have the indicators inside of the headlight arrangement anyway. But it's fine. Um, we got we also got two lips up front. This one in the center and then that one as well. Uh, on the side nothing too fancy, only the door handles and that's pretty much it. The, yeah, the rear also looks kind of dated I guess. If I'm being polite here. Dated is the... is the word. Um, yeah, but anyway. What matters is what's under the skin, so let's get into this. Oh, it's River Drive? Hmm. That's gonna be interesting once we get to the trim. So this has a 3.5 liter V6. 5 From cast iron. It seems so, you know. I mean, SUVs are never really light, so... You gotta take that into consideration. If it's supposed to be cheap, just just uh, make it a cast iron because the, the extra weight doesn't really matter anyway. Then dual overhead cams with four valves per cylinder, no VVL though. And then forged internals, 203 horsepower is not a whole lot for a 3.5 liter. Also have reliability issues with the max RPM. Yeah, it's got a really high stroke with a relatively average bore. So that is that is why. Very low cam profile, 18. That's that's extremely low. And then 11.1 compression ratio despite of that. It is naturally aspirated because V6 is under of turbos yet. We get direct injection with single configuration and standard intake running on regular fuel. 13.5 fuel mixture is kind of average. It's not it's not too rich. It's not super lean either. 6,000 RP, uh, 6, RPM uh, red line and then an, a mediocre 52 ignition timing it's 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 in it's pretty much halfway it's not super super high but it should be a little bit higher i think you should lower the compression a little bit and instead give it higher ignition timing because that'll probably bring the peak power of um that'll probably make it so the peak power comes a little bit earlier and with the 6000 rpm rev limit you really don't want to make your max power just before that. As far as the exhaust system goes, 
We got tubular headers with dual exhausts. One and a half inch pipes are certainly enough. Then high flow freeway cat is pretty much normal and then two reverse flow mufflers for a good bit of noise reduction. It really isn't that loud, all things considered. The reliability for a 2015 engine with only a 6000 RPM rev limit is kind of low. Yeah, the Conrads are definitely not happy with this. What if we go for IBM Steel instead? Then it's totally fine and the reliability goes up by almost 12 points. Yeah, okay. Then, no, 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 not, not to the final uh, screen yet. We're not done with this yet. So it's a six-speed automatic with a viscous LSD, only a rubber drive as we've seen. Very short gearing. Two forty fives front and rear, very sporty steering behavior, but with a tendency to understeer on the limit. Maybe maybe that's a little bit too sporty for such a large car with a let's be honest, pretty lazy engine. It it just doesn't it just doesn't seem to make much sense. Hard long life road tires um, do make sense though. And then vented discs up front and on the rear. We do not have any brake fade. Stopping distance is good as for, um, for such a large car. Very, very big rotors. <laughs> and then fully clad under tray, which being an SUV, you might not want on your on your car then again it's river drive so people wouldn't necessarily take it off-road anyway just like most uh, most SUVs five seats with standard interior and, in, and infotainment all driver at, uh, all driver assists except for launch control because we don't need launch control in this in this one anyway advanced safety is always nice should give this thing a very high safety rating and looks like we got a comfort preset here pretty much with standard springs, gas monitor, tube dampers and passive, passive sway bars and I cannot speak today the right height is relatively high but that's normal for an SUV so it's totally fine and it weighs just a bit over 2 tons has 71 reliability which tell you what let's go back here select this and see how much it increases now 75.2 so that's quite a big increase in reliability indeed considering you know the the overall car reliability on the final tab tells you you know the average of every part on the engine and increasing the the average reliability of the whole car by over four points just by changing one thing on the on the engine bottom end is pretty significant Utility is 101.4 as expected because the utility stat currently is a little bit broken. Um, off road is 32.62, that is not bad. The service costs are less than $2,000 per year. That's also pretty good. And then we have the total cost of 12,300, which for a large SUV is quite cheap indeed. So that is, so, uh, you know, goal achieved, if you will. <laughs> Let's now go to the Elite trim. 
which has a V8 and a couple of extra things. Um, the looks are exactly the same other than if, in the fact that it's white. Also, it's all-wheel drive now, finally! 4.9 liter V8 aluminium 5 volts per cylinder. Now this one's gonna be a lot more powerful. Billet steel crank, I-beam steel conrad, lightweight forged pistons. That's still very high stroke for the bore. Again, the conrads are not happy about this. Yeah, I mean, the red line here is pretty high, as you can see. 10.7 compression ratio, 40 cam profile, no turbos, direct injection twin configuration with a standard intake. And then we get the 13.6 fuel mixture, 78 ignition timing, which is significantly higher than on the V6 we've seen, 6900 RPM limit. It's also much higher. And then long tubular exhausts for better airflow. Dual pipe, uh, like dual exhaust pipes. Lots more diameter. So going down to two inches would give us more torque, but would also decrease the power output slightly. Uh, same same setup here as on the on the V6 high high flow freeway cat and two reverse flow mufflers. So it looks like, or it sounds like we have, yeah, bypass valves. That's what I was getting at. I I didn't I didn't uh, see that it had those on the first way through. Um, but anyway, this seems like a much more suitable engine for for an SUV like that. Six-speed automatic is still in there. Spacing is still the same. And the acceleration is, you know, significantly better, as is everything else on the main stats. Electric LSD, power distribution of 35 to 65. Sports compound road tires. Please show me the other graph. Okay, so it's still the same. 255s on both ends. Alloy, alloy rims as opposed to the uh, steel ones that of the of the base version. Uh, three pistons up front and two pistons on the rear end again on the brake system. Man, these charts are not updating. Let's run it through once and then. Okay, now there we are. <coughs> so the size has gone up as well of the rotors and we also now have two pistons on the rear end instead of just one. Fully clad under tray still and eight seats, premium interior, premium infotainment, advanced safety. Yeah this is definitely not, like this is ne definitely not a cheap car anymore. Semi-active dampers and active sway bars would make it pretty good off-road. Give me a second, is this the, is this the off-road preset or is this the comfort preset? It was the comfort preset. 
So this is all about the comfort but not about going off-road. Despite the overdrive, the, the good power distribution, the electric diff, 30.07. Like if it's really gonna be an SUV, it it sh it should it should be higher than that, the off-road stat. What if we go for an off-road skid ray? How much does this affect it? 32.3, which is still not amazing, but better. <laughs> I bet that these make a big difference. Yeah, 45.65. This is apparently more like a, you know, more like an Audi Q5. It's not really meant to go off-road, but it kind of looks like it. And this is, this is a pretty good representation of um, SUVs these days because they're you know except for the Range Rover Sport um, they're not really suited for going off-road anyway despite the despite of the um, pretty high ground clearance and the all-wheel all drive and they they all fail off-road the BMW, the BMW X5 is also a very good example for that, or the or the X3, the X series in general of BMW. They're not not at all suited for going off road. But what else is to say about this car here is that the average reliability is 68.2, which is lower than the V6. That's mainly got to do with the fact that we got more electric stuff in here with the premium infotainment and the premium interior and wait the reliability of the engine was 66.6 .6 on the other one this one's 68.8 yeah so this this reliability solely comes down to there being more you know fancy electric stuff in there service costs are 2500 and a little bit per year which is still Kind of acceptable. It's not too high for a, for a car this big, anyway. But we got one more version here, which is the SL version. Also having all-wheel drive, and this one comes in red, apparently. This also has the V6, but it's the sport trim rather than the stock trim. So we got I-beam steel conrads this time lightweight forged pistons. Still no turbo. Twin configuration standard intake. Uh, regular and leather still um, 13.5 fuel mixture. 66 ignition timing is finally a little bit higher than, than on the stock one. So is the RPM limit of 6700. Then long tubular headers with dual exhausts, no bypass valves this time. Plenty of exhaust diameter for the for the 270 horsepower. Two straight from my first, huh? <laughs> so it's gonna be a little bit louder. V6s sound pretty good in this game. Um, still a six-speed automatic with unchanged spacing. You really should look into the spacing, man. Because, wait. Yeah, just doing this will give us 0.3 uh, seconds faster acceleration time and better sportiness. Anyway, viscous LSD still 45 to 55, 
and power distribution. Only got 10.2% wheel spin. And it oversteers. That's probably not what you really want from an SUV. Three pistons and then one piston on the rear end. Smaller smaller size than on the Elite version, but then again this is probably a little bit lighter too, because of the fact that the V6 is probably lighter than the V8. Fully clad still. Um, nothing really to talk about here. Five seats, standard interior infotainment and still advanced safety just like we've seen on the base version. This is also pretty much the same as on the base version. Only now we have it seems a sport setup here with very low ride height. We got some bottoming out so the right height might be a little bit too low. Let's see what this does. 8.3 seconds from 0 to 100 is not particularly fast. Neither is the 200 km an hour top speed. But then again, this is an SUV and the aero, like the drag coefficient is terrible. <laughs> the total costs are not much higher than the than the base version, which is to be expected because the the base engine is pretty much the same only different tuning this time and you know the interior is the same but this one has all-wheel drive off-road is 26.36 that is pretty low indeed service costs are slightly higher than on the base but still significantly lower than on the on the elite version yeah, we got a significant penalty for oversteer here in the drivability tab. And also for bottoming out. Uh, the tire, what, what are the tires again here? Sports compound. Hmm. I think... I think this is like... The base version was pretty accept pretty good actually for for a cheap SUV. The Elite was decent for a higher class SUV, but this one like this doesn't really make sense. Why doesn't it make sense? Um, first of all, if it's if it's a sporty version, why don't you give it a V8? Like why why would you put a less powerful engine in there? And also why does it oversteer? Why why would you make an SUV that oversteers? I I've never seen one such thing and I don't think it would attract many customers either. Because uh, <laughs> who want an SUV that you can't go off-road and constantly oversteers. That is just... Um, that's not really the point of a car like this, is it? So... Overall, uh, would I rec recommend the... Canyon Aero? The base version, yes, if you like... If, you, if you'd like a cheap SUV that is affordable to run... Well, you know, it's not gonna be economical, but other than that... Um, and I want, and and I would recommend the elite version as well for a more premium experience, for a higher class uh, driving experience, for more comfort, for a little bit more power. Well, actually, quite a bit more power. All-wheel drive. Yeah. Would I recommend the SL version? No, <laughs> because. Well, I keep saying this, but it, it, it just doesn't make sense. Why, why would you have an SUV that oversteers? And also has a spoiliness rating of 19.1, which is pretty low. Yeah, 
I I just didn't get it. So hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, please click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.